Uh, okay, so leather, or no, just jackets. I don't know why I got a little kinky. Jackets have always been my thing. I love collecting jackets. I've always been fascinated by like super warm jackets or denim jackets that patina. By the way, Sugarcane 1953 type two uh, from Self Edge. I wear this all the time. Anyways, I love jackets a ton. I also love being tied up in leather. <laughs> Not true. I don't. Actually, very claustrophobic. The point I'm saying is that I buy jackets all the time. I flip jackets. I sell jackets. I do everything just because I always, I'm trying to find a perfect jacket or an interesting jacket or something like that. And if you have a hobby of collecting or a passion for cigars, wines, clothes, watches, shoes, whatever it is, you start to know the product base, basically. You know, like, okay, you know, these are denim jackets, these are leather. Every once in a while, there's, in every passion, I feel like there's something that you look at and you're like, oh, shit, that's new, that's cool. And the Freno RJ2 Shearling Line Denim Jacket with a 20 ounce outer denim jacket is one of those jackets that I saw and I was like, that's a, an amazing jacket. It's like a hybrid mix of like a B3 bomber jacket or just a B3 jacket mixed with like raw denim iron heart like thick denim jackets and I was like that's something I need to get and then I clicked on the price and I was like that's something I need to get in like four months. I did message Andrew, the guy that I think is the head of Free Note Cloth, and he ended up chatting with me and I actually asked him a few questions that he answered for this review, so here we go. So first off, off the bat, I really need to say that this jacket is a great jacket. It's really well built, the stitching is beautiful, the jacket's beautiful, but it has some things that I would have changed if I was designing this jacket, and I'm only going to be this harsh on the jacket because I really, really like this jacket. I'm not saying at all throughout this entire video, even when I point out some of the things that are a defect of the jacket, that this is a bad jacket. So some things that I just wanna get out of the way really quick is that this jacket fits me true to size. I wear a size small with most jackets, a 38, and this fits me perfectly. I'll get into fit a little bit more later, just a lot of people ask that and I always forget. Anyways, I'm pulling up some information about the jacket right now, just so I can kind of read the product page to you, which is, I, sometimes I think it's stupid, sometimes I do it anyways, but this is my first gripe with the jacket and it's not even really the jacket it's every brand does this and it's with this hobby which is like people that want this heritage outerwear that's nine hundred dollars there needs to be a really 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 good description and the reason is because I feel like the customer base that you're getting wants to know every single detail real quick intermission if you don't mind subscribing and tossing me a like that would be greatly appreciated Thanks. But anyways, the denim of this jacket is 20 ounces. It's very, very uniform. It's very smooth. It has a little bit of a hairiness to it. Not a lot of slub or anything. Really important to know that since there is a shearling body lining in this, you can't wash the jacket. You can't just like throw it in a washing machine. You can have it dry clean, but it's not a jacket that you can just toss in the dryer or anything like that. Okay, so like I said, I reached out to Andrew. I asked him some questions and he was kind enough to answer them for me as he's also very busily trying to sell his products. But here we go. So I said, what was your inspiration with combining a denim jacket with a shearling lining? And he said, this piece was really all about warmth. We had developed the silhouette several years back but using the shearling which is warmer than down and wool really combined nicely with the 20 ounce denim. That statement that shearling is warmer than wool and down should have a big star at the end of it just because nothing is really warmer than down. You can keep lofting down out till you're like impervious to all the elements. Eddie Bauer actually who invented the first down jacket used to stuff jackets with down so much that people climbing Mount Everest actually requested him to use less down. So at the end of the day you can't really beat down, but it is warmer than a lot of regular, pretty thin, like warm up be down jackets. And yes, technically it's warmer than wool. It also technically is wool. It's just lofted wool that's not all woven to be a texture. It's the skin of a sheep and the outside. So yeah, it's warmer than most things, but we'll get into more depth on that in a bit. Okay, so here we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of the jacket where I said, have you done any testing of this jacket in cold weather and how has it fared? And he says, absolutely, all of our jackets are tested usually about a year in advance to the production of the release. We tested this jacket during the winter of 2018 in Utah, maybe about a dozen wears or so in temps from zero to 30 degrees. Now here's my thing with this jacket. Like I said, I love this jacket, but I do have some qualms about it. The first thing is looking at that shearling lining, it looks like Free Note takes a lot of care in saying that there's no balding, there's no scuffs or anything like that. 
and they meticulously check to see if any of their jackets have balding or scuffs or anything like that and then you'd assume that those jackets wouldn't make it to the customer. My jacket has quite a big, I don't know if it's balding, but it's definitely not shearling chunk on it, right near the tag, and I took a picture of that, sent it to Andrew just to basically say, you know, this is the jacket that I got. Also, I'm gonna do a review on it. Is this normal for your jackets? And he said, yeah, totally normal. So I don't know really the back and forth of that. Not something I'm really thrilled about at all, especially for a jacket this expensive to have that kind of balding patch on it. And it has a smaller patch above that where there's no really hair at all. And on the collar, you can see there is also like a gap, a little bit of balding there too, which I, like I said, this isn't something that you want to see on a product you're buying to last you really for a really long time and to be this piece that goes with you. So I was disappointed in that. The rest of the actual lining is really nice. Although I do think that the shearling is shaved a little too short. It's kind of, if you've ever gotten like near a buzz cut, it's like a little longer than that. And it has that like spiky feel to it. And I was really hoping that the shearling would be similar to the B3 that I have. I can't talk about all B3s because I've only had two, but the one that I have, the actual shearling is a little bit longer. You can see when I'm doing that pencil test that it's a little bit longer, so there's a lot more warmth to be had in that B3, but also, when I wear that B3, it's super chunky, so I'm assuming they kind of shaved it down closer to relieve that silhouette from looking puffy, but I would have really, really liked that extremely luxurious, soft-handed feel right out the box, which it doesn't really have. I mean, it's decently soft but it's not anything where your hand kind of like melts into the pile of it and you can move it around. Important thing is though that's not saying that it won't change as I wear this jacket and it wears in. Okay and remember when I said one of my biggest gripes is when companies don't put a ton of information in their description down to give you like every last detail? Here's why that came into play. So the jacket body is lined with shearling. So the chest area, the back area. The sleeves are lined with this cotton satiny lining. That's a really beautiful lining and it's super nice. I really, really like that lining. But this is a jacket that I wanna wear basically at any temperature. Obviously, if it gets ridiculous, if it's like negative 60 degrees, I don't wanna wear that Fahrenheit, by the way. But I do want to wear it, you know, in 10 degrees, in 8 degrees, in 4 degrees. I'm in New England, so it gets down to like 3 at the lowest. But I want to be able to wear it then and feel comfortable. And I do feel comfortable in the chest area, but my arms get cold. I mean, there's this, obviously, in a denim jacket, which is going to let the wind in anyways. But that's something I can kind of ignore because it's a denim jacket. I expected that. But, but really, one, I thought that the sleeves were lined with shearling just because it didn't say anywhere in the description that they weren't. And two, what I see denim jackets that usually are built for colder conditions, that's usually, you know, a Sherpa lining, a blanket lining in the chest, is usually a quilted lining in the sleeves. A nylon quilt with like a polyester fill or something. And polyester fill is not my favorite because it compresses and it doesn't stay, you know, warm for its entire life. But something is better than nothing. And I asked Andrew about this and his reasoning was really that the 20 ounce denim mixed with that lining basically stops the wind and it was warm enough for him. And to be honest, I bet it will be warm enough with a lot of people. But for me, I would have really, really loved something quilted, shearling especially. I know the reason they don't typically do shearling or wool or anything like that is because if you have a wool sweater on and you're putting your arm through wool, it's it's like Velcro, it kind of sucks. Long story short, what I'm saying is that this is a jacket you're gonna wanna have a heavy wool sweater under. Not saying this is a bad jacket or that ruined the jacket, but it's not a jacket you could have like a long sleeve Henley, cotton Henley on, and just like walk out the door if it's, you know, 10, 15 degrees. I'm also talking about really cold. So my last gripe, and then literally it's all compliments for the jacket, is the collar. The collar, I think, is amazing. Shearling lined, really soft, and people comment on it literally 24 seven. I had a lady, when I went to an arts and crafts fair with my girlfriend, grab me by the collar and pull me in and say, this is it, son, this is it, as she's grabbing it, and I was like, okay, that's fun. What I don't really like about the collar, or not even what I don't like, what I wish can be improved is that I wish Andrew and Freenote Cloth kind of copied from, where it's really the style of this denim jacket hood I have on the RJ2, but if I put on the B3, you'll see what I mean. So once here's, here's the big daddy, here is the B3. It literally is like putting on an oven. So you saw that denim jacket hood. The difference though with this B3, which I will do a review on one day, is this. If it's cold and you wanna block your face, 
this goes up high, and you have this belt right here. I mean, obviously I look pretty ridiculous. I actually bought this for a movie that I was filming, but this comes in handy so much. When you pull this up, it covers everything. You can flip it up more here. Goes around my face. It's basically better than any scarf I've ever worn. It's just a thick shearling lining like this, that's amazing. And I absolutely love it. In the winter when it's freezing cold, you flip it up, you bury your face into it, and you walk through the snow, and it's great. I love that. I really wish that they did that with the RJ2. Okay, so anyways, on to the next question I asked Andrew. Are there any specific design aspects of this jacket that you're very proud of in particular? Is there a functional purpose behind the riveted pleat? One of, you know, the front pleat right there. And this is what I wanna bring up that he said too, basically. We really like the fit. The jacket became a functional piece because it is so warm, but the fit is second to none. Fitting a 20 ounce denim jacket with body line shearling can be a tough task. Yes, dude, that's so true. I mean, if I put on that B3, you can even see when I'm sitting down, I'm wearing like a woolly mammoth. I'm carrying it on my back. This is a huge jacket. This jacket weighs like 10 pounds. It's a beast. The thing with the RJ2 though, which is honestly amazing, is like looking at these fit picks, obviously you can tell it's a stiff jacket. I'm sitting next to it, standing up on its own. That's really expected. It's 20 ounces plus shearling. So nuts. But the thing that's crazy is that it doesn't really look that much thicker than like a de this denim jacket that I'm wearing right now. It doesn't look like I'm hiding like a child in my jacket. It looks fine, which is crazy. And that's really where the fit shines. It's that I'm going out in 20 degree weather, 25 degree weather, 15, whatever, feeling warm and looking like I have a slim, nice profile, which is something that I really value. The sleeves are actually just right on every jacket that I have. It's either usually this is a jacket you can wear with a sweatshirt. This is a jacket you can't wear with a sweatshirt because either you can wear it with a sweatshirt because it has lower armholes and that's fine, or you can't because it's really slim fit, you know, and you can't. So simple as that. This jacket found that middle beam where if I don't have a sweatshirt on, the jacket looks slim and fine. And if I do have a sweatshirt on, you can't even really tell. It, I mean, you could tell that I'm warm because I'm smiling sitting in a snow pile. This is honestly one of the best fits I've seen in a denim jacket ever. I've never been able to layer like that with a shearling lining and not look, you know, slightly puffy or slightly abnormal. Overall though, like I said, it does have those flaws. This jacket fits great, looks great, is very costly for the mistakes that it had, such as, you know, the bald spot on the jacket and the little thing here. But overall, I would highly, highly, highly recommend this jacket. Oh, also, if you care about the fact that it's raw denim, it's fading really quick. I've probably worn it five times, 25, 30 hours in total. Already starting to get some nice fades on the sleeve. So, so next year, if I do a follow-up of that jacket, I bet it's gonna look pretty damn beautiful and broken in. So highly recommend it. Definitely talk to Andrew if you're concerned about the bald spots or anything like that. I messaged them on Instagram and got great results. So that's it. Bye. Oh, 